Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm going to look at this. It's the Boss Cam uh, little cube camera, which was sent to me from Security Camera 2000 for review. So I'm going to review it and I'm not going to unbox it, but I've got to take it out of the box to review it. So there it is. That's the little cube itself. These uh, have been around for a while. I've seen a few. They, you know, it's a form factor is interesting because it is quite bulky, but it's, mm, yeah, I guess there's a bit of weight in it. But I think the key thing with this when I test it is to find out whether it's going to be, be any good for UHF, for long range FPV use. Um, it comes with a selection of cables because it does have quite a bit of connectivity. We've got the standard AV cables obviously. Um, this one goes through a little mini USB, or I can't remember if it's mini, yeah that's the mini USB, the micro USB is even smaller. There are some cables here for plugging into FPV transmitters, if you've got one of those standard 200 milliwatt FPV transmitters, it looks like this will just plug straight in, making it very easy to set this up for FPV use. And of course there is the ubiquitous USB to mini USB connector, everyone's got millions of these, but you got to be careful because they're not all the same on some of the keychain cameras, the wiring's a little bit different, so it always pays just to put a little tab on there and say what this particular cable came with, because there's no guarantee that this cable will work with anything else, or that any other cable will work with this. I'm not going to bother testing it, so we don't know. And there seems to be, what have we got there, there's an AV out, what's that one? It's got a little, is there a matching connector on here? There must be. I'll have a look through the cables, and we'll set it up and have a look. It takes, of course, the little uh, micro SD trans flash cards, um, I'll just zoom in on this because I'll give you a closer look. The little trans flash micro SD cards go in there and probably, if it's like most of them, it'll tell me in here, probably 16 gig or something will be the limit or maybe even 32, I'm not sure. And this seems to be some kind of mounting setup here. Again, I'll, I'll look into that. AV out USB and some buttons for menus on the back so you can program it up because it does a lot of different standards. It does 720p, 1080p and different frame rates and different other things it does uh, time lapse and still so let's uh let's put it on a plane and see if it works okay let's test out the uh, boss cam on the uhf band and you'll notice there's a couple of little spikes here already that, that big one is actually the local police radio telephone uh the, the radio system they're on 429 point something megahertz, 429.3 megahertz or something around there and so one of the reasons that it's not a good idea to fly UHF around this particular part of the country. Now I will plug in the boss cam and we've got everything set to maximum sensitivity so if there's going to be extra noise it will show up. When I turn it on and find the little power button, here it is here, you'll see the LED come on, bing, there we go. Now. The noise has risen, but not very much. I must say I'm quite impressed with that. What have we got there as our sensitivity? Just make sure we've got maximum sensitivity. Where are we? Find the right button. Here we go, reference level. And here we go. It's maximum sensitivity. And it's, I'll just disconnect the power so you can see. Only a very small increase in the noise floor. In fact, I'll just move my, my little marker here. Make sensitivity, where's my marker key? There we go. Move my little marker down to 433, which is actually off from where that other one was. I had that there just to show you. Yeah, 433.3, .3, that's close enough. I'll turn the boss cam back on because at the moment the noise figure is around about, where are we? Um, if we look here, Noise level at the market is minus 112 decibels. That's the background noise. So we'll plug the boss cam back in and we'll turn it on. And there we go. It now says minus 111. So there's not a lot of increase in the noise. This is not a very noisy camera from a UHF perspective. That's brilliant. That's excellent. Even if I bring this lead here right up. If I bring this lead up very close, of course, get a massive increase because there will be some radiation from the power lead. But the actual camera itself, that's... Not too bad, I'm quite impressed with that. What I'll do of course is I'll compare it to the, um, the Horizon HD now. Let's put the Horizon HD in the same position, see what that actually does. Right, now it's time to test the Horizon HD camera. I've tested this before, the emissions from this before, but we're gonna do a direct comparison with the Boss Cam. So I've got it all set up there, let's plug it in. The mark, currently we've got a minus 100 and 111 decibels of background noise. Let's plug this in. To wait for it to boot up, of course. There we go. Whoa, that certainly produced an increase. It's minus 
Oh, and then when the screen kicks in, it's way up there, minus 83. So that's a huge increase in the noise floor. You can see the noise there. And a lot of that's coming from the screen. Remember, the boss cam doesn't have a screen, so hey, that makes a big difference. So yeah, if you take the screen off the Horizon HD, which I'll be doing in the next part of the review on that, that'll probably drop the noise quite a bit. But if you just want something obviously out of the bag, well, the boss cam's got a whole lot less noise on UHF. So I'm going to hook it up to the AXN. I'll use my little balance lead adapter because this doesn't have a battery in it. These, just like the uh, Horizon HD, they don't have a battery in them. You've got to power them externally from a 12 volt source, three cell lithium. And uh, big thing I've noticed in this is mounting. Mounting is it's a cue, but there's not a lot of ways to mount it. It's got these little studs on the side, which obviously can mount into some kind of tilt and pan bracket, but that didn't come as part of the standard offering. So um, it might be an optional extra. I have to look at that. Without the tilt pan, it's really hard. I put Velcro on the bottom here, but that covers up the microphone. And well, actually, it's actually on the top because on the bottom you've got this lead. So actually just putting Velcro on it and sticking it on a model, not that easy to do. You have to have some kind of little bracket and I didn't get one. So if you're gonna buy one, buy a bracket as well. Find a mount for it. Now, um, so this is going onto the AXN, just Velcro it on in the normal place, plugs into the balance port. Let's go and see if it produces any half reasonable video. So let's analyze that video footage that I've taken with the little boss cam. As you can see, it's pretty good, it's high res. I've, done, I've rendered this video in 1080p. Most of mine I do in 720, but I've rendered this one in 1080p so you can see for yourself what the resolution is really like. Now the first half of this video footage completely unretouched. It's actually straight off the SD card into the Vegas and rendered up as a 1080p video. So you see that's what you get. Now in the second half of the video I did some tweaks because some of the things I noticed in this video which are the same with the Horizon HD is that when you're flying into the sun the blacks are not very black. The whole level shifts and the, the blacks, the dark levels become quite washed out and that's a bit disappointing. So I tried to lower the blacks a bit but then when you're flying with the sun at your back or you get the sun at the back of the camera the blacks get a little too black. So you know, if you set up some curves, if you're really fussy, you'd set up a whole lot of curves and you post edit and make it work. But you know, you've got to realize this is only a hundred and something dollar camera. So you're not going to get thousand dollar or even $400 performance. And I'm quite happy with the performance out of this camera. It seems to work really well for the money. So can't grizzle there. Now, as we saw on the spectrum analyzer, it's a quiet camera on UHF and on 2.4. It doesn't really make much noise at all, which is brilliant because if I was going to use a recording high definition camera on one of my, my FPV models with UHF-RC, then I'd probably go with this little cube because it certainly, it only raises the noise floor by a decibel or so, and that's not very much. It's excellent. As you saw, the, even the latest version of the Horizon, if you leave the screen on it, wow, it blows the noise right out. It takes you know, 30 decibels of extra noise on the noise floor or something. It's a ridiculously high amount of noise. As I said, I'll take the screen off the Horizon and we'll check that again in another video. So what do I think of this camera? Let's look at the pros and the cons. The pros, it comes with a lens cap. Damn good idea. The Horizon doesn't, and I criticized it for that, because if, if you have this laying around on the bench or it goes in a drawer in your box, it's very easy to get that lens scratched. You don't want to scratch that lens. It can ruin your $100 camera, $100 and something dollar camera. So yeah, love the lens cap, thank you. Um, setup, setup is very easy. Now the Horizon's got an LCD screen, which makes it easy, but this has got all the buttons, nice tack buttons on the back, and it comes with a, a wealth of cables to do just about everything you want. You can buy this camera, you can buy a 200 milliwatt or 600 milliwatt 5.8 gig video system, and you can just plug them all together and it'll work. It runs on a three cell LiPo, so you don't need a, a voltage reduce, you don't need a, a UBEC or something to drop the voltage down to power this, because remember, neither this nor the Horizon have a battery on board. You have to power them externally. So this one needs 12 volts, the Horizon needs 5 volts. Horizon camera, they provide you with a little UBEC to do that, but it's another piece of stuff to go in your plane and so forth. And if you're running planes with a three cell system, then this is gonna be much easier to set up. 
But that's also a bit of a con because if you're running four cells, well, that's too much voltage for this little camera. Then you will have to put in some kind of regulator or run a separate battery just for the camera. So if you want three cells, this is great. If you're running four cells, eh, the, the Horizon may be a better option. Now, um, what don't I like? Well, what I don't like is there's no way to mount the damn thing, but I complained the same with the Horizon. It's got the camera on a string and there's no bracket for it. You have to make your own, to make your own bracket for this too. You'd think that for, you know, 50 cents or something, they could make a stamped metal mounting bracket that you could just clip this into and then screw that to your model or screw it to your model and clip this into it. It'd be so much easier if you could do that. Maybe they do supply that and it wasn't in my particular box. I don't know. I didn't see any reference to it in the, in the instructions. No, there's no doesn't come with a mounting bracket. Points off for that. Um, weight, weight. This is 60 something, this is over two ounces, it's 60 something grams. It's quite a hefty camera. Not as hefty as a GoPro, but a lot heftier than the Horizon, which is just a bit over 40 grams. So, you know, if, it, if it's a small plane, this may be a bit heavy for you. And the Horizon, of course, is much lighter if you take the screen off. It probably goes down to about 30 something grams. So it's a much lighter HD solution. And this is going to be suitable for your slightly larger models. Now, I didn't notice the drag, even though it's quite a boxy thing. It's boxy, but it's good. Um, I didn't notice the drag too much. But of course, the Horizon will have much less drag because it's got a smaller camera unit and you can hide the rest away. Oh, another bonus for this is it came from Security Camera 2000. Oh, I just noticed a negative. I've been think, look, the wire's come off. The wire on the power lead has come off. Now, that's pretty bad, <laughs> I've got to say. It is just a normal little, uh, one of these little... Uh, connectors here like you have on a balance lead sort of thing and I've got to say that's pretty bad actually I'm not at all impressed with that if I was flying and the wire came off I'd be even less impressed <laughs> so hmm I think some work could be done there that's absolutely awful that's atrocious how do I get the plug out now the wires I've still got the negative lead on there but the positive lead has come off that oh no, the positive lead's still on the negatives come off that's awful it's, and that's just fracturing because the wire was flexing backwards and forwards that's awful that's terrible so powering this you probably want to make some kind of other arrangement. I'm not at all happy with that. See that? You see failures happen on screen in real time on RC model reviews. So yeah, the leads are great, but they're not very good quality, are they? A dab of hot glue before you actually use that lead might just solve that problem. So there you go, that's it. Would I buy one of these? Because they sent me this one for free, so I will use it. Would I buy one? Yeah, I think I would actually for a hundred and something dollars. It's not bad value, certainly for UHF um, work with long range FPV. Not bad. I will try it out as an FPV camera and I will do some side-by-side -side video showing you what I get out of the Boss Cam and what I get out of the Horizon HD. I'll put both of them on the same plane, one on each wing, fly around, I'll put both videos up. Don't have time to do that today, so I'll do that another time. But there you go, the Boss Cam from, from Security Camera 2000. Thank you for sending that to me and yep, yep, can't rate Security Camera 2000 highly enough. They really do provide a good service. I don't often endorse suppliers, but they are good. If you've got any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever, experiences with this camera, then put them in the comment section below the video. And I thank you for watching RC Model Reviews. More stuff coming up very soon. Stay tuned. Bye for now.